on the edge of our seats. It was a gritty game. It was an ugly game. It was a teary-eyed game, but the Orlando Magic pull out the victory against the Detroit Pistons 112 to 109. What is up, Second Cousins? I'm here, your boy Kyle. Happy to be joined by Jay. And Jay, I, I can't bury the lead, man. Paulo Bancaro, teary-eyed. I don't know why I'm fucking crying, man. I'm not crying. You're crying. Misses two free <laughs> throws at the end of the game. Like, I'm pulling my hair out. Can't believe it. He's clearly under the weather. It's an out-of-sorts game, but we're bummed. And the cojones on this gentleman, on this young burgeoning star that we have in Orlando to say, everyone clear out. I got this. I got this. On Jalen Duran, the step back two with the harm, just with 0.8 seconds left, ices the game. Again, the guy is clearly not right, hasn't been against the Cavs tonight, not his best performance, but the courage he had to do this, the confidence he had, and, and also the confidence that Coach Mosley had to very clearly just – draw up a, all right, everyone go to the left side, right side of the court, and Paul is just going to cook on the left. Number five. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's man. play number five. Exactly. So, Dude. I mean, what were you going through at the end of this game with Paul Bancaro making that winning shot? Bro, like you said, if that was a game to have me on the edge of my seat, that like that was the game. It was insane, yeah. man. I was on, I was actually on the phone with a friend of mine. We were watching the game together kind of. Oh, that's and, nice. Yeah, yeah, and dude, I was just sitting there, and I'm like, bro, this is the recipe right here. You know, obviously, we we know the free throws is not really Paolo's, like, strong suit, so and he knows it. Every You know, so we're sitting, I'm sitting there, I'm like, bro, please do not miss these shots. Please do not miss these shots, and sure yeah. enough, he doesn't miss one. He misses both of them. Dude, at that point, I'm like, oh, my God, this is going to be tough. This is going to be <laughs> tough, you know. And, uh, you know, up until the point where before that little post game interview with Kendra Douglas, mm -hmm. it was that like highlight play was like that last that last uh, shot that he hit on Jalen Duran, bro. Mm -hmm. That that was an insane shot, man, regardless yeah. of like the outcome of how of all his emotions and everything like that is a clutch shot. That's like. I'm super proud of Paolo for, you know, taking it upon himself, just kind of taking the lead and doing what he's got to do to make sure that we got that W. That's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, it is it is a little bit frustrating that the game got there, if I'm being honest, Jay. Like, it definitely felt like we were playing down a bit to – I mean, no disrespect to the Pistons. They actually have got a really good, young, talented team. I can't understand – why they're as bad as they were this year. I know they had some injuries earlier when Boyan wasn't playing, but this team is solid. Like Jalen Duran is a beast down low. Cade Cunningham can go off any game. Asar Thompson was a guy that I thought we were going to draft and I really like. Let, Jaden well, listen, Ivey, they got dudes. It's funny. You were talking about Asar Thompson. So during the yeah. draft, man, when I was at that draft party at the at back then, it was the Amway. Now it's the Kier Center. Right. Uh, dude, I was like ready. Right. When yeah. I saw Detroit win right before us and grabbed him, man, I was like, I'm done. I'm out of yeah. here. But I got it. I definitely, I, I definitely wanted him too. It's yeah. it's a bummer. I think we got you know a similar ish player in Anthony Black. Maybe not as prime as a defender but Anthony Black is a very good defender um but it definitely felt like the magic wanted to take Asar and then I th a lot of people were surprised when the Pistons took him and it, it's paying off very well really? he's he's a very bright really? spot for their team this year okay I, I I wasn't really too I wasn't paying attention too much to all the noise outside of just our team I do yeah. remember seeing a lot of people like wanting Anthony Black though. Yeah. I was more on that Asar and uh Grady Dick train, but yeah. we won't go there. <laughs> we won't go there. This isn't this isn't a yeah. uh a draft yeah, recap. Yeah. We're recapping this Pistons game and and as I said, I mean the the third quarter I got a little bit worried. It got a little bit sketchy for me. The we turned the ball over five times out of the ten times total for the game. So half of our turnovers were in the third quarter. We lost third that quarter, quarter curse. Yeah, we lost that quarter 30 to 25. 
I'd be lying to you if I didn't get a little worried. I was thinking like, oh no, this isn't going our way. We were missing a lot of free throws. I mean, looking at the free throws, we had missed seven free throws. Shot 66 from the chair. It's called the charity stripe, gentlemen. It's that they give them to you. It's that's where they're for free supposed to be. If that's gonna, that's one of the bread and butters of our team, Jay. If we're shooting 66 percent uh, from the line, we're not gonna beat those good teams when we're playing tougher competition. Um, so I was a little disappointed in how I felt we played down to the Pistons a little bit, but. They, we got the win, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters. That's it. That Literally, that's it, right? You know, obviously, we sit here, we discuss all the internal, like, components of the game and whatnot, but we got that W, baby. Let's get it. Um, I want to bring up one point, right? Okay. What do you got? I, I, don't think, I don't think this game is as tough as it is mm-hmm. if Franz would have just performed a little bit better, man. <laughs> Uh, I, I hate to, I hate to, to be that guy and just bring it up. Right. Cause I, I love both of them. Um, I, you know, I enjoy watching both of them, uh, both Paolo and Franz, you know, they're our main guys, man. And I have this yeah. discussion with a lot of people all the time. Like those are our stars. Mm-hmm. Paolo is sick. We get it. Right. That's a, that's a whole different thing. But like, we might've been a little spoiled because Franz was like, you know, demolished them last time we played them and we were kind of like expecting that to be honest with you i wasn't expecting that just because of like just the nature of things but dude like he only scored 14 points in the game on six of 13 though like pretty efficient i'm with you that he just has to take more shots though right jay like why is he getting especially that we know paulo's not feeling good exactly like he should be taking 20 plus shots tonight yes and yeah, I, I, I see where you're going with that. You know, we have a really balanced scoring attack, like a bunch of guys in double digits. We had eight guys in double digits, which one is one of the things that's great about this team. But I think also we do need – I want Franz to assert himself a little bit more. And in a game like this, it's yes. like, bro, Paulo's not feeling well. Come on, like, let, let's get like, Franz. Do what you got to do. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of my, that's kind of my main takeaway from this game is, like, it's not as tough as it – as it is, if he just, you know, takes a little bit more control, just does what he does. You know, like yeah. the first, the first, the last time we played them, like he clearly was like, Hey, I'm back in Michigan. This is my, this is my place, you know? <laughs> and like he took over and did what he did. So, um, definitely not, you know, too, too happy with that. Um, how did you feel about just randomly Mosley throwing a uh, go-go out there to, yeah. to, I liked it. I have, I mean, he just played, he played eight minutes in the game. He just like went really early to him first quarter, like eight minutes left in the first quarter. And I was like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. I wonder how it's going to shake out with the rest of the game. You know, does this mean Wendell's going to be playing a little bit with the backups? You know, maybe he wanted to get him a more favorable matchup, uh, you know, not against Jalen Duran, get Wendell going a little bit more offensively because Paulo's sick. But that didn't end up happening. You know, Moritz came no. in for his regular okay. backup minutes. And was- maybe it was the way Moritz played, Jay, that like got the rotation back and like and kind of ousted Goga for the night because Moritz again just played so freaking well. He uh dropped 14 points on six of nine from the yeah, field. That's pretty good. Pretty efficient. Seven boards, like a f- super efficient plus seven. If we're given a plus minus player of the game, I guess that would be Anthony back with plus eight, but both Cole Anthony and Moritz Wagner, who were both big in this game with plus seven. That was interesting. Well, I mean, how did you, what did you think about that Goga insertion early on? Yeah. So I, de- I definitely thought it was an interesting choice. I think uh, more so he was kind of just referring back to the old squad that he had when they had that game. And I know mm. Goga played like plenty of minutes that game. Yeah. But I tell you what, Goga comes out there shooting them threes like that. <laughs> I, I was I was I, I, I would sit him down really quick too. <laughs> hey yeah. Goga man, we love you, but yeah. dude, <laughs> wide left. We just do the blocking. Man. Four. <laughs> um, um. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, and Cole was cooking in front of grandma, which was nice. That was a heartwarming yeah, moment. That was awesome. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Grandma, I she think, hadn't uh, seen him play since Dante fifth said grade. she was 95. That's bonkers, dude. That's, That's yeah, great. Yeah. That's nice that he can share that with his grandma. Many more years to Grandma Anthony, although that wasn't her last name, but you, you know what I mean. Um, and just a, a good – this is something – you know, I'm watching – check out episode 61 out there, Second Cousins. Peach and I talked about on this show, Jay, the players we're keeping an eye on. We kind of ranked who we're most interested in in starter, backup, and bench. And I put – I put Cole as my backup. Like I'm pretty, he was my number two. I really want to see what happens with him just because he had such a downturn the last like 15 or so games, 20 games. And we, I think he's an important part of the success of this team moving forward and into the playoffs because of what he brings with his ball handing. There were times when, you know, Jalen got a little ahead of himself, especially in that third quarter where we were really missing Markel Fultz or another capable ball handler, and Cole got back in, and things kind of evened out a little bit. So okay. if he can get back to, to where he was, I mean, 5 of 11 isn't great, but 13 points plus 7. He had some awesome assists, man. He was dealing it tonight, 7 points. And he and Moritz are a big reason why we again won the bench points, 46 to 34. Um, we oh, win, yeah, for sure. you know, that's – that's huge. Another good game from Jonathan Isaac on an efficient five of seven. He was the other bench guy in double digits. So um, I'm happy to see Cole starting to feel it again, doing a little bit more of his, you know, dribbling through the lane, stop and go, twisty turvy, you know, step back jumpers in the lane, kind of getting to his spots a little bit more and he's seeming to be more and more confident. So that's definitely heartening to me. No, it's definitely good. Um, I think, I think he just needs a little bit more time to just kind of really, really mature in his role and kind of understand. I have this joke with like my family where I tell them like, dude, like Cole's got to know this is not like the street ball and the court like in New York City. Like, <laughs> times he gets a little crazy too. But um, you're talking about Isaac. Did you get as nervous as I did? When they like hacked him, and he, I was like, dude, y'all have went, to be careful with this guy. Yeah, he went down to the floor a couple of times. I, I'm, I'm actually so in the beginning of the year. Anytime Jonathan Isaac anything, I'm beginning, I'm losing that fear a little bit, Jay. Like I'm, I'm happy to say that trauma is exiting me a little bit. Okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately You're for me, it hasn't yet. Especially on those, still- especially on those like really, really hardcore ones. Like yeah, there was yeah, one sure. that like. He got he got hit pretty hard. Um, yeah. Quite interesting to me. I'm still obviously, you know, I I would love to know this answer. Probably never would realistically get it. Um, I still kind of want to understand Mosley's rotation choices. Um, like what? Which he what sat was interesting. He sat Suggs down when he was mm-hmm. like four for four or three for three. Like yeah, immediate. Like I. You were talking about Suggs getting a little bit ahead of himself in the third quarter, the but third. like I, I understand. You know, we have this thing going on, like the whole third quarter curse, right? We still got to figure right. that out. What's going on with the guys there? But I just don't understand. Like I see it happen very often, where like some of our guys are like sparking, man. They're like on fire, and like mm-hmm. they'll get sat. Yeah, and it's like. It's like, are these guys asking to be sad because they need a no. break? Like, do you yeah. see this guy? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. That was one of the things that I specifically wrote down to talk about today because I'm just like, I don't understand, man. Like, Suggs came hot. You know, he was like three for three. He started the game he made really four for four. well. Really yeah. well. Yeah, he was doing work in the paint. He was hitting from three. Um, he was having a good game. All of his turnovers were in the third, and that was really the only shaky part for him. Outside yeah. of that, he did have a really good game. Like in the first half, I have his first half stats here. Jalen Suggs, um, 11 points in the first. He had a really good first half, I guess, because he only ended with 14. But I think that's yeah. kind of what your point is. Like, let's give him some more minutes. Let's give him some more touches because he's clearly feeling it, especially when, as again, Paulo's not feeling well. Let's let's divvy up some of those touches. He's not he's not a selfish guy. He's cool being out there a little bit of, as a decoy and like letting some other guys eat tonight because he's not feeling well. 
Um, but yeah, Jalen Suggs, I wrote that down. He was hot early. He was hitting from three and Gary Harris was another guy. He was in there. He got our first bucket again, another three again from Gary. So kind of seeing that Mosley is trusting Jalen to do some of the ball handling duties, liking to insert Gary and get some floor spacing. He's four of six, four of five from beyond the arc, 12 points tonight. So those are all of his points. Um, just a good game from him as well. I like the guard play. Yeah. Initially, when I saw the starting lineup, I thought, you know, we're going to do this again, you know, but obviously it, it works. So, mm-hmm. I mean, we're just doing what we got to do to make it work. I just I just don't understand why we sitting the guys down so quickly. Um, I guess unless his plan was to kind of like reserve him to bring him back out later on kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Dude, it, it's got to be so freaking hard to be a coach and like manage these guys' minutes and manage the rotations and everything. It's it cannot be easy. Uh, something, you know, I I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Anthony Black. We talked about him a little bit earlier when we were talking about the draft yeah. and who we expected the Magic to get. I was just a little concerned. I want to see him doing more. Like he's he can be dynamic on the ball. We had some issues with with ball handling tonight and turnovers again in the third, but. I want to see Anthony Black kind of attacking the paint a little bit more. He just he's settling a little bit too much into a spot up three guy, and that's kind of where the majority of his shots are came from tonight, or half of his shots. He had five points. I just I, I want to encourage him to be a little bit more active, go to the hoop with a little bit more ferocity because he's got the height, he's got the explosiveness, and I think you know when he's moving yeah. around the paint and cutting and doing some of that stuff, our team becomes a little bit more dynamic. He seemed a little stagnant, a little bit of just kind of settling for, you know, pivoting around the three point line tonight. So I would have liked to see a little bit more from Anthony black, but I can't complain too much. The young man's just settling into the NBA and trying to find his way here. Yeah. I think for a B man, I think uh, he gives me a lot of like, what Jalen Suggs in his rookie year, like those kind of vibes to me as a fan. Like when I saw Jalen Suggs kind of like come into the team, I was definitely one of those guys that was just like, like, dude, like, what are we doing? Like, what's going on? Like, you know, he's kind of, he's a great defender. I love what he's doing defending wise. Um, I don't think his shot is necessarily like the, like where it should be or where it needs to be. It's Um, a slow shot. it's I a agree. set shot, but he, it's working your... for him, though, yeah. too. I agree with you, though. I, I think he just needs to get a little bit more body. Um, mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's becoming a league where it's like, yes, like it's it's a very quick league, but it's still very much like a man's league, and mm-hmm. Anthony Black is still very much a kid. I think he's he's got to do a little bit of filling into that role. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. just my opinion, right? No, for but sure. Yeah. Because if not, he's gonna keep getting he's gonna keep getting bodied by like the big dudes. He'll be. I think he's gonna be just fine. Uh, we talked about our other rookie, Jet Howard, on the episode too. Had some fun with that. Um, <sighs> other things that were happening around the game today that don't aren't really necessarily on the floor. Um, I saw Hank sitting courtside. I believe that's his name. It's like our super fan, the big guy Hank, who like sits you know, courtside for the yeah. in Orlando, and he's been traveling around all year this year i noticed him a lot this year he was there with his girl again courtside is like, he a super fan i saw some i was looking at reddit pretty and damn i saw super that, to me i right i i saw something in reddit and then maybe if somebody who watches this you know this channel like right. if they know they can comment Yo, on the, let's on the get, video yeah, but i think his name is hank let's get him on the show jay he's a he's i think he's an attorney Okay. Well, I, I read this on I read this on Reddit. They said that they're like he's like a like an attorney for the Magic, and that's why he's everywhere with them. Oh, really? That's what I read. Okay. I well, know, we need to. This is see. This is what we need to do here. We need to exercise <laughs> these rumors and uh, separate from fact from fiction. So, if you're Facts. watching, sir, and if your name is Hank, Hank, come on the show, man. Let us know. Hit us up. <laughs> Court did. Cousins NBA at Gmail. Like, let's go. We need you on the show. I did see him for sure. One though. thing, I mean, for the tens and tens of fans in attendance tonight at the Little Caesars Dome, they are whatever it's, they call it. They were giving out pizzas. That's pretty sick, you know. And it got me to thinking, like, all these arenas and their names. What else? Can, you know, are they going to give out Kias to everyone at the Soul Center? Like, 
will the mortgage arena, like the the Rocket Mortgage Arena, will they pay off my mortgage? Because that would be cool. You know, I'll has there been has there been anything that you've seen given out at games or something that you would like to see? I know the mortgage thing is unrealistic, but um, like, are the Knickerbockers going to be giving out khakis? Like, what would what would you like to get as a fan at a game? I would love to get a Little Caesars pizza. That would be sick. So believe it or not, at the uh, at the Amway Kia yeah. Center, it, they I've seen them give out beer before. Like beer? in the first or yeah 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 because they you know they have a sponsorship with Michelob Ultra hell yeah there was a there's been games that I've been to where they literally give out Michelob Ultra Ooh. they're like you know you got to go to the specific spot or whatever okay. and yeah they, I'm with they, it I've seen them give it out and now that we're and doing a thing also, with fifty we could do it with that his fifty cent he's got the booze now right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also another cool thing is uh at the at the end of the games a lot of times there's like starry team people who's who are standing outside and they give out starry to everybody okay. they start just throwing soda to everybody i mean <laughs> that could be dangerous <laughs> <laughs> but i've definitely seen it happen here yeah okay yeah i did actually in the what in the amway center now the soul center kia soul center that's what i'm calling it the soul center baby um, I caught one of the parachutes. I got a at the last Court Cousins night plug for Court oh, Cousins the night thing. last year. Yeah, it was a it was a little uh, parachute coming down. I got a hat and a gift card. It was awesome. I was so crunked, oh, and I just kind of so looked it, up okay. and it fell into my lap. It was beautiful. They're giving out they're giving out hair ties now. Really? Well, that's yeah, a practical like they gift, have this sponsor. Gentlemen. They have a they have a sponsorship with a uh, with a company called Teleties, and it's like this little thing that they're dropping with the little parachute things. Okay, well, hair ties are always a good gift for the lady, and they have you know our mutual interest because it's always good to have a hair tie handy, if you know what I mean, gentlemen. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so back to basketball. Evan Fournier, we saw his beautiful bald dome tonight. I just, I'm just happy to see Evan actually playing basketball after being in purgatory with the Knicks for a couple of years. Um, I thought for a second, like, is he going to torch us? But he didn't. Thank you very much, Evan. Uh, quiet 13 points, 5 of 7, but it's just good to see him playing basketball again. And the Knicks, my I was watching with my boy. He was watching the Knicks game on one screen. I was watching with him, well, uh, the Magic game. The Knicks lose tonight, um, and they're all – they're hobbled too – we win, brings us up into sixth place. We are now a game and a half behind the Embiidless Sixers and only two and a half games behind the Knicks for fourth place. Um, it's tight between us, the the Pacers, the Heat. We're, they're all right there, but it's looking good right now, Jay. We got a big couple games coming up. Yeah. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but in the video where it was showing after Paolo made the shot tonight, Mm-hmm. You know, Paolo loves dropping them f bombs, but he was oh, definitely yeah. like he was definitely. I I could almost read it. It was almost like a point where he was saying basically like like f the the six seed. Oh, he was okay. like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. He was he was in the moment. He was like, man, you know, I don't six know. Six like f yes. Do you guys do do you do the little cursing thing on your channel or no? No, we nah. curse. Sorry, we're here for the okay. big boys. Okay, perfect then. All right. So yeah, he's I could see him going in there. He's like, man, fuck the six seed. <laughs> like I guess somebody can remember if I'm wrong, but I definitely saw him feeling that. Like right after this was before he talked to Kendra. But um but yeah, man, we got some good games coming up. I'm excited. Tomorrow you know, it's a great back time to be a it. fan. To, yeah, sorry. Tomorrow back at it against the Hawks. So without I Trey. Mean, oh, without Trey? Yeah. They oh, listed that's him out. Big. Oh, I did not know that. That's very helpful. Okay, so that makes me feel even more confident about the game. Hopefully, Paulo gets well though. Back to back, that man is sick. Um, and then we you get could the definitely you could definitely him. see it and hear it in him, yeah. bro. Honestly, yeah. if I th if if Franz steps up tomorrow and just you know does what he's got to do with the rest of the team, you know, let that man rest. Man. That's what I'm saying. He, yeah, give, like, give him a game, point. man. Give him a game. Yeah. So we got the Hawks Sunday, Nets Tuesday, Jazz Thursday. Um, so stay tuned to the channel, Second Cousins. 
make sure you get your tickets for Court Cousins Night. We'll be down there. I booked the trip, Jay, so I'll be kicking it with you. We'll be down there Thursday, March 21st. Fun, it's going to be a blast, go man. Find the food spots. Absolutely, homie. So thanks for coming on, Jay. Second Cousins, let us know how you're feeling about this game, how you're feeling about the Orlando Magic, and let us know if you know Hank. Hank, we need you, man. <laughs> Peace out, Jay. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.